Coming up on This Week in Radio Tech, we've got a number of guests, including a guy from Fiji, talking about flow batteries? Is that it? Oh, man. Uh, and uh, Frank Foti is here. we got some awards going on. It's, it's a, we're live at NAB 2017. This Week in Radio Tech is brought to you by my friends at the TELUS Alliance, where they have a weekly newsletter that's called Direct Current. Let me suggest that you subscribe to it at telusalliance.com slash direct current. Also brought to you by Broadcast Supply Worldwide at bswusa.com. Lots of great deals, and hey, you can order late in the day and get your broadcast product shipped right out to you. Also brought to you by Lavo, home of the Crystal Clear audio console, the new Ruby console, and the new product called Relay. Amazing stuff from Lavo at lavo.com slash twerks. Hey, welcome into This Week in Radio Tech. It's Kirk Harnack. Who are you? <laughs> Undisclosed co-host. Oh, so the, 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 the location is disclosed, but the co-host, <laughs> the identity, <laughs> made it secret. Kirk Harnack here at the Telos booth at NAB 2017, <clears throat> along with Chris Tobin. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm doing well. You've been, doing, you've been doing your homework. we got some stuff to show. I'm, uh, well, I just want to be prepared in case uh, our guest suddenly disappeared. You know? <laughs> That's always a possibility. We, we've had so many people say, yeah, I'll be there. And then all of a sudden, oh, I forgot to have a flight at 1230. Lots of other, people, convenient. Lots of other people run off uh, on me, but at least you haven't yet. <laughs> well, I'm a very tolerant person. And uh, coming up on our show, we got a number of guests talking about technology and new things here at NAB 2017. We're about to wrap up. In fact, NAB 2017 is all over within an hour and a half. So we got a hard out time here about an hour and 10 minutes from now, maybe an hour from now. And um, Frank Foti is going to be holding court here at the Telos booth <laughs> with uh, our usual finale. So hang, hang on for that. Uh, joining us uh, in the first part of the show, Mark Persons. Hello, Mark. Welcome uh, hi, Brainerd, Minnesota. Glad to be here. Been on the show before and glad to be back. Well, we'll talk to you in just a minute. But first, uh, le piste de la résistance. Bon. Would you call me KC1 HMM? <laughs> KC1 HMM, brand new amateur radio operator license. I saw, yeah. Yeah, Marianne Simon. I, indeed, I saw that. I was very excited. Welcome in, Marianne. Thank you. Glad you're here. <laughs> We're, we usually, <laughs> this is like the guy who was on, on Skype with BBC, right? Yes. <laughs> the kids in the background. <laughs> Hey, oh, yeah. uh, so our show, and by the way, welcome if you're watching on Facebook Live, welcome in. If you're not, yeah, that's a convenient way to do it. We're also streaming on the GFQ uh, network, gfqlive.tv. That's a great place. There are several different uh, outlets and platforms to watch the show there. And uh, you can subscribe uh, to our channel on YouTube or uh, at the GFQ network or at thisweekinradiotech.com. That out of the way, we're actually going to get to our first ad, but the ad is a very informative one, so check this out. Marianne. Yes, you're wearing the yes. uh, the color of the new I, Omnia yes, Volt. Indeed. Yes. So what, what, what's the Omnia? What's the Omnia Volt? What it's is a it? pocket rocket. <laughs> it is. Oh. <laughs> what, what's, I'm sorry. What is it? Yeah, I'm not allowed to be live anymore. Um, it is a one RU audio processor. Uh huh. You know, we talked to a lot of people who, over the past couple of years, have said, "Okay, number one, we need a replacement for our Omnia Six. Um, we want a big station sound, we don't have a great budget, and we also don't have a lot of rack room. So, uh, and that's becoming a huge problem for people. <clears throat> so the engineer said, okay, what is the most we can fit in one RU? So we designed it from the bottom up. Yeah. What we did though, which we haven't done in the past, is as a very innovative company, every time we've come out with a new <coughs> processor, We've designed a new user interface, which is fun for us, but not so fun for the user who has, okay, now, now how do I learn this? So we looked at products we had in the past, like the Omnia One, which had a great user interface on the front panel. Mm -hmm. So we used that. Yeah. Um, and that's very easy if you just need a few adjustments. But this also has full metering on the front panel. But the biggest thing of all is the sound. One thing that we've done in the Omni 11 G-Force, which we've then taken to this product, is an ability to have a quick setup. Yeah. So we call yeah. it Quick Tweak. We started out calling it Speed Tweak, but learned soon afterwards that that would not be a phrase that we would want to use. <laughs> but it shows that we're obviously not into <laughs> that culture. <laughs> so <laughs> this, this, no quick, this is the first time we've done something like a Quick, a quick Tweak, tweak. Yeah. And, and I've got to play with this. It's really can die. You pick your preset, 
then you dial in the sound you want easily yes. without having to remember re what does a release time do? Right. What does an attack time do? Which band do I adjust the limiting threshold on? Yes, exactly. So that will get probably 80% of the people where they want to be. Yeah. However, if you want to go further than that, you can get into each individual band. So yeah. it's got five bands of AGC, five bands of limiting. Corny has taken a lot of the ideas that we have from Omni 11 G-Force and ported them into the Volt. So the Volt, in essence, is a baby brother to Omni 11 G-Force. You know, I've been asked, what's the difference between the Volt and the Omnia 1? Because they're the same size. And uh, That's the only similarity. Well, yeah. <laughs> and and, and, and so, the user interface, and, and, as far as the front panel. Well, yeah, front panel with a knob and some, and some lights. But um, I've been telling, uh, this may not be company authorized, I've been telling people, well, the Omnia 1 was developed before the Omnia 11 was. Many years ago, The yeah. Omnia Volt was developed after the Omnia 11 was. Omnia 11 G-Force, uh, indeed. G-Force, yes. Right. Yeah, indeed. Yeah. So. And a different team working on it, but there's also something else. But wait, there's more. The final clipper in the Omnia Volt, and this is just, this is why you and I both love working for Telos. They never hold back. So the engineering team on this didn't say, well, you know, we're not going to give this our, our latest and greatest. The final clipper in the Omnia Volt is Frank's newest design uh, uh, from just a couple of months ago. So we actually have a newer, more advanced clipper in the Volt than we do right now in Omnia 11 G4. Is, 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 this, is this clipper codenamed Silvio? Uh, it's probably <laughs> it should, should, codenamed Dante. Dante. Yeah, it's, <laughs> Silvio Dante, that is. Not so we're coming Dante. to the end of our of our sponsor time. No! The, the Omnia Volt is, is, is the and it won an award, right? Yes, what indeed. It won the Best of Show Award. Yeah, from so, uh, Radio, Radio World. World. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. Our friends at Radio World. So it's gotten a huge amount of publicity. Ooh, and it has an HTML uh, five. Yes, 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 it yes. works. I, I've, I've run it on this phone. You can yeah. remote control it. It yes. does great. Yes, tablets yeah. and yes. any computer. With a modern browser. Yeah, very easy to use user interface on the GUI as well. So cool. Yeah, it's Indeed. been the hit of the show. All right, yeah, Marianne, thank you, thank you for being on. I appreciate it. Thank you. The, I'll go the, the Omnia Volt. Go to Omnia. Go to TelosAlliance.com, processing, yeah. and look for the Volt, and uh, you'll see it there. Well, there's a picture of it right there. Well, except hey. you call it processing. <clears throat> yeah. Bye, Kirk. Okay. <laughs> bye, 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 bye. Take care. All right, uh, so thanks a lot, and thanks to uh, Telos Alliance for sponsoring this week in Radio Tech. Let us jump right in with uh, Mark Persons, and Mark, oh, things, things that you have seen around, uh, around, hey, Anthony, come on in, Anthony's up, in the, he's, sure. he's, he's in the, uh, he's in the, uh, the batter circle here. Well, I, I have a story to tell at, at this show. Yeah. Years and years and years and years ago, I used to come to the show and I'd walk all the, the all the days, I'd walk, okay, well, that's fine, except that I'd wind up missing people. I get back from the show and well, I didn't know you were there. Uh, so my latest plan for the recent years is I walk for the first day or so and I see all the booths I want to do and sure. and I talk to everybody I want to talk to and then I sit down at a friendly booth and I wait for people to walk by. <laughs> <laughs> see? And so and then I catch the other half of the people and from my list so far, I found everyone on my list. What a great idea. Plus more. Yeah. yeah. Plus more. How about, you know, as I as I draw closer to retirement age myself, mm. I think we should come to the show. We know when we're all done, when Telos won't have any more of me, you know, I'm going to bring a rocking chair and I'm just going to set it right out there so, right, in, right in, the, in the aisle, in the middle. Uh -huh. Yeah, and just sit there and you know drink my Coke, and sure. iced tea. Okay. Go on a Segway. Well, <laughs> well, you could do that. That's, that's an idea. What I learned this time, though, is that my friends br bring me ideas. They gather ideas. Yeah. And what I learned this time is that there's new technology. It's it's evacuated <laughs> envelopes. There's these there are these glass envelopes, and they put this magic on the inside, and the British call them valves, and they're brand new. And I, I you know. It, we're going to throw our transistors away and replace them with these tubes. I'm surprised you're not wearing a save the tubes button. Save the tubes button. Yeah, no, Nautel was giving those away. I still have oh, one. Oh, sure. You have one? So I, I never got one. <laughs> so, anyway, that's, that's what awesome. I learned at this show. Now, have you been around any of the virtual reality stuff? What, what, what I, did you see that was, like, super cool? Oh, well, I did see some virtual reality. Yeah. Uh, and I, I don't know. I, I I don't have anything special to say other mm -hmm. than I learned a lot at every booth out yeah. here. So, you have the uh, patience to stop and talk to people. Well, 
I had the time. I oh. planned plenty of time to do that, as as anyone should. In other words, if you come to the show for a day and you're gone, you've missed a lot. Because every day I came and there was more to learn. So that's how it came out for me. Do you go to the to the uh, to any of the sessions? Is that still in your bailiwick to go to the uh, sessions? No, I haven't, although three years ago I spoke at two of the sessions. Uh, uh -huh. So I don't know. Once you're a speaker, then it's <clears throat> over with. So We've got one more thing to mention, and that is a book. Oh, yes. Uh, talk to us about that. Uh, my father wrote a book years ago. He's passed away 10 years ago. Okay. Uh, the book is uh, Where Have All the Broadcasters Gone? Hmm. And I gave you, Kirk, a copy. And you liked it so much that, gosh, you were kind enough to read that book to, uh, to as an online uh, talking book. And so you were gracious enough to share the chapters with me. It's on my website, mwpersons.com, slash. Uh, slash books. Books. But if you just go to mwpersons.com and look under what's new, ah. there it is. So anyway, and I'm so thrilled. You see, my dad started broadcasting in the 1920s. And he started so early in broadcasting that there wasn't any money to pay him or anyone else. He worked for free for a while, didn't he? He did. He did. <clears throat> and he had, a, he had to have a job as a waiter in Duluth just so that he could sustain himself. And after a while, the radio station started selling advertising. It was all brand new back then. And then they had some money left over one month. And said, "Well, Charlie, here's your ten dollars for this week. And if we, if things go well, uh, keep going well like this, you're going to get another ten dollars next week." Wow. And that's how he started his career for 68 years in broadcasting, wow. whatever it was. One of the things that struck me in the book, uh, and this will be the last thing we we'll have time to say about it, but um, how did they get records? Because there's a lot of live performance. People would line up to do live skits and things like that, read poetry. Uh, but how did they get records on the air? Well, there was there was no electronic may, way of getting music from a phonograph to the air. So you hold a microphone up to the gramophone speaker. Can you believe and, that? And it, you be quiet while it's going oh, on. Oh, don't speak. That's right. <laughs> and and the sound was just terribly yes, tinny. Yes. I mean, it would, must have been just awful. But back then, radio was such a novelty that yeah. people would put up with distortion and noise and poor frequency response and everything else just so that they could hear this new medium. Wow. Radio became quite a word. Even that wagon that, that, that kids pulled around, Radio Flyer. Oh, yeah. Oh, sure. Course. Everything yeah. with the name radio was magic. <laughs> wow. Amazing. Mark, thanks for joining us. You're welcome. Appreciate it very much. It's great to see you, as always. Always good to and, see uh, you. And I, I put a lot of effort in, in the not as much effort as your dad put into writing it, but I read this book mwpersons.com slash books. You can download the MP3 or the WAV files. Mm -hmm. You'll If you do a little searching, you'll find the book also, uh, Where Have All the Broadcasters Gone, on SoundCloud, and it's on YouTube. You can actually listen on YouTube, or if <laughs> if you know how, you can download the YouTube files. And it's all absolutely free. That, just, that's free. Just right, do yeah. it. Yep. Good and deal. it's fun. It's history <laughs> the way it really was. It, it, you'll laugh, you'll cry. Uh, cause there's, there are a couple sad parts in there, too. Oh, there are. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you, you can't be dry, yeah. and you did a great job making it uh, interesting. I don't sound the least bit Minnesotan, but oh, I try. Minnesotan. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's the one. <laughs> yeah, you sure? You betcha. I can't do that. <laughs> At good, least I'll keep a straight face. Good seeing you, Kirk. Good seeing you, Mark. Thank you. Take care. Okay, bye-bye. All right, you're watching This Week in Radio Tech. Uh, we are, um, oh, I got I turned Ooh. the wrong one down. There we Ooh. go. I better learn how to be a disc jockey. <laughs> Maybe you should run the mower next time. It's all this technology. It's all this technology. Who's, whose golden tones were those? Well, I've been working on my Kirk Harnick impressionation. You know, it's, 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 it's been, that sounded a lot worse it's than been, that. It's been, it's been uh, a talent of mine that people have brought on. You know, a Anthony, I don't even I haven't tried your last name. Well, it's like a kazoo with a B at the end. Kazoob? Kazoob, yeah. Really? Yeah, yeah it's a kazoo. <laughs> kazoo with a B at the end. Man, i got to learn how to play one of those. <laughs> we have a whole band. Exactly. It's a, yeah, you get the bigger ones. Those are the lower frequency. <laughs> you get the really small ones. It's a piccolo kazoo. So Anthony works at Ward Beck Systems. Ward Beck Systems. I, I tell you, if, uh, apparently I came in. Uh, you probably worked with a lot of Ward Beck stuff, mm -hmm. yeah? Yes, yes. Small market. We never saw Ward Beck stuff. Really? And so you're familiar with it. I'm not. Except to me, it's like this. It's been around a long time. That yes. makes some solid stuff. 
very but where is it now? Very much. Well, solid. I'm telling you, they're here. Oh, well, they've they've advanced considerably. Yes. It's our it's our 50th anniversary this year. You know, 2017 celebrates 50 years of Wardbeck Systems. How I got involved was I started a website called the Wardbeck Systems Preservation Society. So all of these guys had all of these consoles that floated out, and they're like, where are all the schematics for this? Where are all the schematics for this? So Wardbeck sent me their archive of schematics, and I scanned all the schematics and put them into a website form, and they're available for download. So you can actually go and download any of the PDFs of their vintage legacy console modules, and oh, I've great. been supporting them. And So I've been unofficially working with Wardbeck Systems since 2002, but... Uh, uh, you know, now now that I've graduated from a communications engineering program, they're like, uh, well, now you have you know now you have a skill that's valuable, instead, <laughs> right, right, instead right. of the legacy support, you know. Right. Well, yeah, I worked at I worked New York City radio stations and um, and it, at the networks. I worked at the networks, and it was always a known entity back in the day. If you worked at NBC, it was McCurdy. Okay. If you worked at ABC, it was Ward Beck. There you go. And if you worked with the Westinghouse Radio Group, it was Ward Beck in most places. Ah, oh, very good. Ah. So I worked I worked on many both. McCurdy and Wardback. That's fantastic. Well, if it wasn't for McCurdy, there wouldn't be Wardback. That's correct. You know, it's 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 kind of a fun thing. Yeah. But uh, I like to say that Wardback is a metal company that made great sounding electronics because Th- that's, you know, that's true. They're they're just tanks. They're just absolutely. Oh, you're tanks. not kidding. So so yeah, we've continued that. We've very much continued that in all of our designs. Yeah, so we're yeah. we're working on that. But you brought some some show and tell and, and oh yeah, in in this in the the central hall, there's this squeeze point where everybody has to walk through. Yeah. And. You guys scored the, the squeeze point. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. they and they we we developed a, a very special item, which was the first microphone stand with an IP address. So I just uh, they said you can be a carny for a couple of days. <laughs> so 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 I'm one of the engineers that actually has a little bit of you know per people skills. Why, this is crazy. I, I walked here. by and I saw that. Uh, so so you, you know what a mic stand looks like, right? A floor mount mic stand. So it's got a big heavy base on it and a, and a, the, the the column and it's got the mic on the top and it can adjust up and down. But this one's different. Yeah, it's like it's got it's got a single channel microphone preamp built into it, and you you log in to a mic stand. <laughs> the mic stand has an IP address. The mic stand has an IP and address. a MAC address and a MAC address. Yes. Yeah. 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 So, uh, so in the base, there's so it's got an XLR connector for the mic. XLR connector for the mic and and RJ forty five. RJ forty five and the RJ forty five provides power over Ethernet. So yeah. so so all of the electronics inside are powered. So your analog signal is this long, and then it's not digital coming out; it's packets coming out. Yeah. So you yeah. know this is this is the fun thing, so the new fun thing. About this AES AES sixty seven. AES sixty seven. Yeah. yeah, we're part of the Media Networking Alliance. Yeah. Very much like you know the Talos Alliance, and and we just formed the Alliance of Alliances the other day. So, <laughs> you know, we're we're, we're keeping track of all of these different things and uh, we're very excited about uh, being compatible. So, so the mic stand is a really interesting form factor, but you have a more standard form factor here. Well, we, we call this the Primo. Oh, it's upside down. The Primo. It does live up to his name. You know, it's the Primo A1 because there's audio one channel input uh, where a lot of our competition and other vendors, they increment in 8, 16, and 32, plus all the wire and infrastructure. You know, the talent, we increment in one. You know, an eight channel box would be too much for even this show. So, so we drop four of these and in, into a standard Cisco power over Ethernet switch and, uh, yeah. and power over Ethernet, and boom, we're part of the uh, part of the AES sixty seven family of things. So you can pick it up on your uh, on your Telus console and your Axia consoles, or you can pick it up on the Wheatstone stuff. Yeah. Uh, one of the one of the things we've really you know you know there's no more vendor lock when it comes to audio over IP, and that that vendor lock was a lot of butting heads. But now you know interoperability is you know what I've seen coming around here. You know Dante is starting to become AES. 67 compliant and you know we're, we're seeing a lot of companies work together to to ensure that you know the the future of broadcasts you know is 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 interoperable amongst these networks and uh, i've heard people say well i want to build a studio using all aes 67 my answer is well no, no you really don't want that pick your favorite pick yeah. you know pick your favorite vendor because they have things that make life convenient absolutely and then use aes 67 oh but you know what i've got some i want to have some speakers that are made by genelec yeah absolutely. or i want to have a primo i learned it's genelec oh genelec they're they're they're, oh. they're finnish company so so they're genelec if you want to respect them i'm like oh geez well, from now on it's genelec I'll for res- me i'll respect oh, the genelec i want the genelec i'll, I'll I, I have two two genelecs on my desk i'll have to start calling them oh yeah and you sound fancy it's like when you say newman microphones you're like no 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 no, no, no. <laughs> no, it's not, you know. audio technica <clears throat> so uh there's a little screen on this what is that yeah the little screen displays the in- information as such as gain phantom power mac address uh-huh. ip address uh, but because it is an ip device you can actually log into it as well and adjust yeah. the gain and and then this changes the gain back over at the thing 
So you might typically you could have this on the desk. You could have it on the desk. But you might also have it mounted underneath the underneath, desk yeah. with with a switch or, or or someplace out. You know, a lot of uh, lecterns. You know, you put it in a lectern and, and in yeah. a convention center. You just you know plug the yeah. plug it into a, any any RJ forty five jack around the building that is. Uh, that is power over Ethernet. So, but we love the cat cable. The cat cable is, you know, it's the it's the cheapest, most effective, common. You know, get it any color, get it any length you want, and and go that way. It's that's, the cat's that's, cat's meow. That's I mean, the cat's meow. You've got yeah. some more things with Ethernet, but no yeah. IP address. No IP one. address. Everybody's like, whoa, whoa, geez, that's so small to have an IP <laughs> what, address. What does it do? It's too. There's too plain. It's too plain. Well, it does have meow. We call this the Bobcat. Oh, so this is the uh, breakout box over cat cable. Yeah. We 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 developed this thing called Quad Twisted Pair. So if you go to our rj45.audio in any browser, you'll find more information about the uh, the Bobcats that we've made. And what we like to do is we like to take advantage of the the, the twisted pairs. You know, uh, it is a blessing to the audio network that uh, all of these twisted pairs have different twist ratios for common mode rejection. Yeah, you know, that's what we talked about. You yeah. know, Alexander Graham Bell, he was he was onto something. I yeah, think, but I think Steve twisted. Lampin says it best. Though. Okay. Yeah. His presentation is the Belden Man. The Belden. Yes, talks yeah. about the twist. And people have no idea that you could use Cat5 with my cable, mic level, yeah. run a 1,000 feet and do just fine yeah. if you keep the common mode where it should be. If you keep and, the common mode. As Steve likes to put it, he's like, eh, yeah. you'd be surprised. You'd or be you surprised. could spend your money on our shielded microphone cable and have fun too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, you know, there's a, the, I call that snake oil. You know? yes. And there is a lot of snake oil when it comes to cable. And, and a lot of these snakes that you buy are microphone level. So when you're running, uh, when you're running mm -hmm. line level or AES oil, over, you're running over a microphone cable, and, and microphones are, you know, they're susceptible to noise. You know Ooh, that yes. that I that I that I, I can agree with completely. But it's if it's line level, it's 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 the twist. So this is basically a, a passive breakout, completely box. passive. And I could run analog or probably AES three. AES over AES three over it. Yeah, because okay. it's within the it's within the spec yeah. of AES three. So I need uh, I need uh, a couple of mics and maybe a headphone return. Feed, Absolutely, yeah. Uh, way over there, yep. run a cat. Five and yep. plug it in there and, and drop it. Yeah. If you want to return phantom power, you can use up one of the pairs as the return path ah, for ground. Yeah. Or you can use shielded twisted pair, and that's becoming you know readily available. It's so it's you know it's fractions of pennies more per foot than it is. But you know I I, I used to be a wireman and I, I did a lot of DB twenty fives and I said you know I'm first thing out of school I'm going to design this little DB twenty five adapter that eliminates all of that uh, all of that uh, that type of wiring. So it looks like the soldering was done for you already. Yeah. yeah. Well, it's actually two PCBs that are sandwiched together. Uh -huh. So instead of making a hmm. roto-molded plastic case over top of it, you know, the PCB is just soldered together, and there's no circuitry on the bo bottom side. Uh -huh. But you can write the right. Uh, you know, there's a little place for you to label what it is and what's going on there. But so th this takes what, uh, up to two our two cat five two cables. two cat cables. Yep. And that's a total of that's uh, that's eight channels. Eight, eight uh, yeah. Yeah, and and eight, eight wires. there is there a Yamaha version of this as well because the Yamaha pinout is unique. Uh, to yeah. Yamaha. If, if you look carefully, you'll see channels yeah. one through four, ah. five through eight. Yeah. yeah. So if you have Yamaha or Tascam too, doesn't Tascam have that? This is the Tascam. This is the Tascam one. Yeah. Yeah. Tascam so you can standard. pop it right in, yeah. and you already have your breakout. Well, when we lucked out with TIAB wiring, we the, you've got the orange pair, yep. you got the blue pair, you got the you got the brown pair, and then you've got the the oh, sorry the green pair and then the brown, brown pair. pair. So so we do the channel order is sun. Sky, grass, and earth. Ah! <laughs> it was a happy coincidence. It was very, and it's pin too hot. You know, like uh, like so there's a couple other manufacturers that do this type of thing, and three hot. Well, and they they argue with the pin three hot, and you know AES ninety one, I think it was. There, was, I remember a mentor of mine, Neil Muncy, gave me a, a little spinner, and and it was a little spinner that you know you spun around, and is it does it land on pin two or does it <laughs> land on pin three? It was a big debate in ninety one, but uh, uh, yeah. but so so this is pin two hot, and we use the uh, solid color as the as the hot signal, you know. So it's uh it's it's and we want to use all the copper, you know. Uh, there's a couple other companies that do this type of thing, but they don't utilize all the copper, and you know the the world does. We've got precious resources. Let's exploit all of them. Oh. <laughs> all of them. Anthony, Kazub, this has been wonderful. I, Cheers. I, I, we're going to have you on for a whole show. Oh, anytime. You know, yeah. I'm available. Uh, I've, I've watched your show. I, I pay attention. The the one with Patrick was, you know, an inspiration. I, I yeah. paid, paid very yeah. close attention to that because, you know, Patrick, we worked at these interops, and it's very important that, uh, you know, we all work together. And, and if you go to his booth, he's got – you look inside. There's one of our Wardbeck 32MEs that is uh, – that is really good. Uh, for more information on this, uh, go to primo uh -huh. dot aes sixty seven dot audio. That's a lot of dots, but okay. Primo p r e m o primo dot aes sixty seven dot dot audio. So we're we're part of the dot audio boom. 
<laughs> so I don't know if a lot of people don't know this, but there's the dot audio now. So so if you go to xlr.audio, you'll you'll end up at one of our pages as well, or bnc.audio or yeah. patchbase.audio. We should we should get twerk.audio. Yeah, sure, you should. You, yeah. We should do that right now before I buy it for you. <laughs> yeah, then sell it back to me. <laughs> no, no, I'll give it to you. It's, oh goodness gracious! But you got to get on that. It's it's, it's, it's very very important. Oh, good deal. I think uh, we're available at BSW. Absolutely. You know, you know oh. Wordbeck Systems. Yep. You know, we've been working with BSW for a long time. We've got a lot of great vendors out in BSW. Is definitely one of them. What a segue. You're the master. Well, you know, somebody, <laughs> I, I get paid per scan at uh, NAB, so, you know, I get, <laughs> every time I shake someone's hand, that's that's $10 in the bank. My, my wife goes, ding. So. <laughs> hey, Anthony, thanks, thanks again for hey, being with us. Hey, thank you very much. Ken. I, I really, really appreciate it. it. Great to find out about your stuff. Excellent. Well, you guys have a great show. We thank will. you for having me. We will. And we segue right into BSW. Oh, yeah, i got to scan his badge before I leave. <laughs> oh, yeah. Ten bucks? I got ten bucks. Go. I got to go. get my ten bucks here. You know, this is uh, pay for a couple more Tim Hortons. <laughs> well, that I got to pay for the cab ride home, or if I don't get this scan, you know, John's a very important person, you know, to our business. You know, it's it's, it's important to have support, as you guys know. You go. Have a great show. All right, Anthony, take, take care. Thanks, Anthony. All right, Anthony Kazoo with us from Ward Beck Systems. Uh, you're watching or listening to this week in Radio Tech. <laughs> Kirk Harnack, Chris Tobin's along here. By the way, Chris, mm-hmm. in the second half of our show, is going to take us on a tour of uh, a lot of cool stuff. Yes, um, we have some pictures, yes. We have pictures and narration. A little narration, yes, yeah, absolutely. Right. But right now, John Lynch is Before here. Before you get to the second half of the show, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Good to see you. Doing well, Kirk. Good How to see long you. have we known each other? Since I was a baby? Well, almost. <laughs> almost. Just well, let's, let's put it this way. Um, when I joined BSW, yeah. I had hair color. <laughs> It was actually my own before I started enhancing it, before I gave it up. Uh, actually, the, this October will be my 25th anniversary with BSW. Wow. And I, I think I've known you for almost all of them. All of it. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. You bet. We, we, talk, I we go back into it. You, you had to teach me how to spell ISDN. <laughs> See, that's, that's how long ago we go. You know what's, what's really cool about John is that he knows all about broadcast gear and helps people pick the right stuff for what they want to do. People call you all the time. They don't really know what they want. Mm-hmm. They know what they want to get yeah. done. Yep. Yeah. And you help them figure out how to get well, it Well, and that's what works for me. Yeah. Is that because I'm, you know, and with all apologies to the Society of Broadcast Engineers, which I am a supporting sponsor, I am not a broadcast engineer. <clears throat> Would never take that title away from somebody like you. But from one who used this product for 20 years in the yeah. radio and then have adapted. So it's a matter of just finding what do they need what do they need to do? And then we find what's actually going to fit for their usage. And, and a lot of times it comes from right here well, in the Alliance. And you and I have talked about things like you've, a, you're a, a broadcaster yourself. Have been, yes. Talk to me about something about speedboats and rivers. Well, it used to announce uh, what's called hydroplane racing. Ah, ah, okay. Yep. Right. And uh, did that up until 2011. And, uh, but understand, did all the other sports over the years since I started in broadcast in 72. There was a 1972. Yes, I was there. Okay. <laughs> anyway, but um, whether it was that event or another, it was all about being able to do it live wow. and get it across and describe the product. That was something that was always important to me and why I like radio so much because I'm the eyes of the listener at the event. Yes. And yeah. I just yeah. always enjoyed that kind of thing. Well, of course, what I wanted to do for so long when I was on the air before I joined BSW is I always had this concept of, and I also did radio shows. I did uh, those afternoon DJ sort of thing. And of course I'm originally from the Seattle area. Okay. Seattle, it does rain nine months of the year. <laughs> so I'm thinking, you know, it comes along about April 25th and there's a little break in the sky, and all of a sudden there's this big yellow thing that we don't normally see that time of year in <laughs> Seattle. I said, hey, it's a sunny day. And, of course, it's let's celebrate a sunny day. It's 2 o'clock in the afternoon. I'm going to take my show to the beach just because I can. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I couldn't do that then, but now uh, we can. Yeah. Just pick up and go because radio is about what's going on. What's going on is not always going on in the studio. Get out there, be part of the community, live, and this is my political statement here, live and local always works yeah, in yeah. the radio world. Hey, you know, 
Tell your local audience what's going on. And now people are doing it via social media, connections that way with stations too. So it's all good, but it's all, we have to remember what I was taught originally, what you were taught originally. It's not one to a thousand listeners. It's not one to a million listeners. It's one to one. Yeah. And we always remember that. We always have a great product. That attitude really makes a, a difference in how a broadcaster comes across. Yeah. One to one, to one mm-hmm. always works. And you have to know who that one is. So they feel like you're talking to them. Even if it's 100,000 of them, they, when they feel like you're talking to them. You, perfect example. And you know the type where we had uh, a, a given radio host, and he moves from, he's been at some place for a long time, he moves to another place. What happens? That audience goes with him. Or with yeah, her, yeah. because they've generated a relationship over the years. They may never have met, but they still feel like they have that relationship. Same thing as somebody that comes into your living room via TV every night, that kind of a thing, too. Johnny Carson, perfect example. Ah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Everybody felt like they had a personal relationship with Johnny exactly. Carson. Exactly. Never yeah. had a chance. But yeah. what I didn't know, now that I'm from Omaha, he was from Norfolk, Nebraska. Yeah. And yeah. what's the main street in Norfolk? Johnny Carson Boulevard. <laughs> of course it is. <laughs> yeah, yeah, there you go. Of so course it is. <laughs> it wasn't always. But it no, is. but it is now. <laughs> wow. Wow. Cool. Hey, so uh, be, yeah. let, let's 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 wrap up with a commercial message, a little okay. call to action. So right. bswusa.com. Yes. BSW is a mm-hmm. uh, sponsor of This Week in Radio Tech. We really yep. appreciate that. Glad Glad to be part of it. On there. Thanks you, for having me on. And you guys offer some well, not only amazing deals, so you need mm-hmm. to sign up for the catalog and, the, and the, the email specials. Yes, we do still print a catalog. Yeah, yeah. And uh, by the way, the new big one's coming out in October this year instead of January. Okay. So just in time for Christmas. Re- exactly. <laughs> there you go. Uh, what I want to have you tell about, though, is that one of the cool things about BSW is you can order something even kind of late in the day. Yes. And if it's in stock in your warehouse, mm-hmm. which there's not much that isn't, mm-hmm. uh, you can have it the next day. And there is the time frame. Now, this is what people like to think, hey, I can just order it, period. You know, when you're right up to deadline. Uh-huh. Call. Yeah. Don't email it. Don't try and order it online. Call that in. It's a toll-free number, so no problem. Uh, do you remember that when BSW first started, there were no toll-free numbers? And Irv Law said, call, collect. Really? Yeah. When he first founded this wow. company, yes, really in did. 1973. Wow. Call, collect. No problem. We'll accept the call. Anyhow, um, the cutoff time is 7 o'clock Eastern, yeah. 6 o'clock yeah. Central, yeah. where I'm now. Uh, and, of course, 4 o'clock Pacific time. But if you call before then, it will go out that night. We ship out of Ohio, yep. not far from yep. Dallas Alliance. And so most of the country is going to get something in on ground four days or less. I, I've heard that your warehouse is so close to this giant airport where, where UPS has a big presence, I believe. DHL. Oh, DHL does? Yeah. And that you just guys, three other letters, that's all. You guys, really, they just chuck the boxes across the street. Yep. And, mm-hmm. and they, somebody next to the airplane picks it up, and then it goes. Yep. And so they were able to get, that's one of the reasons that we moved the warehouse facility from Tacoma, Washington, which right. is still our headquarters. Yeah. And everybody works there, except me. I'm in Omaha, Nebraska now. and uh, But we ship from a town called Lockburn, which is near Columbus. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, oh, did you... See our little thing that we were doing over there at the BSW booth? Interesting thing for getting radio stations really into social media. Oh, what's that? Via Facebook Live. Okay. We did a number of different uh, presentations on that, demonstrations. Uh, it's a product called HDV Mixer. I've heard about this. Works yeah. phenomenally well. Yeah. Is now, it doesn't cost a buck ninety-five, but it is not hugely expensive either. It's very effective, but there's so many things, and we're just showing it here, and I've been doing this at several other shows, and people are picking up, well, can we do this? And I say, uh, I don't know. The creator, Alex, is here. Alex, can we do that? Yeah, we really can. Okay, good. So how you, <laughs> I don't need to know how you do it, but if you can, that's fine. Right. So we got people creating graphics, doing it, running news things, putting a Twitter feed showing up on the screen, and now, as you know, from being uh, involved in station operations, you may have listeners that are not quite in your terrestrial viewpoint, but now you got the whole thing going on there. So we did different things. 
Uh, named Joe Cipriano, ring a bell? Yes, uh, in fact, he's oh, going to yes. be on this show in a couple of weeks. He was on yeah. my show yesterday. Oh, you got him first. Huh? Oh, yeah. On okay. HDV well. Mixer. <laughs> yeah. So we just did a little demonstration. Uh-huh. Of course, with Joe, you know, usually we do like three or four minutes or something. Joe and I went 16 minutes. We could still be talking. He's a great guy. We love it. So. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's terrific. So you tell him I said hello when you talk with him next week. But uh, anyway, that's one of the highlights here this week yeah. is for because, hey, we have an issue in radio, and that is we've got to keep expanding our audience, and social media is a way to do that effectively. And it's working out for so many people. I'm glad to hear about that, that the yep. HDV mixture is, is, uh, is yep. part of that. The information on that on the BSW website? On the BSW website. Right. In fact, they can see all of these demonstration videos, good, bad, or indifferent, all featuring me. Sorry, <laughs> that's the way it is. But, you know, it's my chance to perform again, so that's fine. The website is bswusa.com. USA. Yes. And uh, great, but thank, thank them for sponsoring uh, Tour too, when you call them And up. there we are, right there. Yes, yeah. absolutely. We sure appreciate being part of the program here. And, uh, of course, we have been connected with Telos and the Telos Alliance since... Basically, the Telos Alliance began, yeah, so that's yeah. a, a great history and uh, one that we're just proud to be part of and, and enjoy that it continues and continues. I don't know if, if you knew about it, but uh, your boss, Tim, yes. did a little video for Frank, Frank Foti. Uh, I wouldn't be surprised. It was, it was Omnia's <laughs> 20th anniversary, okay. and the video is not public yet. Okay. And we're not sure what we're going to do with it. Are we <laughs> waiting for until Frank and Tim pass from this earth or something? <laughs> no, 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 no. Not that bad. No. Okay, good. No. Okay. We're, we, 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 which it's just barely in the family oriented. Uh, oh, okay. That Tim yep. did a great job. And so I just want, if you hadn't seen it, uh, uh, I'll, I got to put it up somewhere and send you a link to it. But tell us we'll make it public at some point. Okay. And it'll be amazing. It was, it was, we appreciate Tim Schweiger. Absolutely. Uh, uh, giving that tribute to, uh, to Omnia's 20th anniversary. And a great leader, president of our company and uh he's he's been there for, you know we still have some people at bsw who were there when irv law the founder of the company yeah. founded the company oh, wow. in 1973 wow. so it's been great so anyway Kurt, john, thank you so much. so much been a pleasure all right good to meet thanks, you thanks john you bet that is john lynch he's been with us he's from bswusa.com and well, what a great bunch. You, you need some broadcast gear some studio gear they've got it for you check him out all right Yep. We're gonna. It's time to move on to uh, the, to the Chris Tobin report. Uh, Chris, <laughs> see, I've been kind of. I'm kind of stuck here. I've got a, a very full time job. Chris, on the other hand, I mean, he just does whatever he pleases. <laughs> sometimes, sometimes, not always. So, Chris, uh, I believe we probably got teed up at, back at the studio. We've got pictures. And, yes, we do. Uh, yes, and we I've do. got a couple of guests to wrangle, so I'm going to let you just narrate and uh, tell us about what you what you saw. Fair enough. All right. All right. Let's see now with the topics this week at NAB 2017. MPX over IP, those of you MPX, what's that? Your composite audio out of your stereo generator. Okay. If your folks are from overseas, you know what MPX is. Here in the States, we call it composite. Well, there are several companies producing product that will help you out with that. And I'll show you a picture in a moment. The companies are Digigram, uh, Gates Air, uh, Wheatnet, uh, Wheatstone, that is, sorry, uh, Worldcast, and there's a few others, but th- those, are, those are the ones that come to mind because those are the ones people keep emailing me about. So we'll talk with those. So speaking of the products of IP, also, SNMP is another one that's going on. SNMP, Davicom, and Burke are the two biggies in the market. There's a few others doing it, but it's still not there yet for some. Davicom has made it possible for the GUI interface to make it really easy to work with SNMP because it's a machine-to-machine language. So you've got to remember that it needs a little coercing uh, on your part unless you're really good at character or command line information. So let's take a first shot at what we're talking about with uh, Let's see. Uh, let's go with the digigram stuff. So we got uh, image number 13 and number 4. So let's go with number 13 first. So we talked about IP. We talked about um, SNMP. We talked about distribution, all these various things. And right now, oh, look at this. Simon's next to me here. So we'll, we'll talk with you in a moment. So with the um, digigram's product, it's using SIP. It's uh, called Blue, Digigram Blue. And it uses WebRTC. But because WebRTC can be a little dodgy at times in a good way they put a uh, an overlay on it so you can actually use it to do talk shows sports shows and it's a way of doing cloud uh, serv- uh, software as a service software as a service cloud and your gateway is a blue coat of uh, chassis in the studio audio in and out and off to the cloud and now you can connect to any codec i like to say it's codec agnostic so it's the very thing you have to think about nowadays as john pointed out it's about being local getting to your audience 
finding out where they are, what they're doing, and telling them what's going on. Now with Digigram's Blue, the ser- uh, software as a service, you could actually do that. You could have your re- contributors out in the field using a Tyline, Comrex, Worldcast product, Digigram product, the Icoya, and anything else, and talk to your, contrib- your, your show. So think about that. We also want to look at the WebRTC that's now being introduced, the folks at Comrex. I'd applaud John, uh, Tom Hartnett and uh, Chris Crump and the others for really bringing to market the uh, WebRTC stuff and saying, okay, now it's time to get more better quality audio on the phones or from the phone concept. So picture number 009 for Suncast will bring that up. The Opal. Comrex is Opal. Pretty cool little box, form factor you're familiar with. And it, it's the best way you could take your Skype calls and put them to air or just any browser call. So I said Skype just for those that are saying, wait a minute, are you talking Skype? No. If you have a WebRTC enabled browser, you can click on a link, connect, and now you're participating in the show with high quality audio. Very important to think about. So if you want to know more about these things, contact the folks at Comrex. If you want to know more about what's happening with Digigram, contact them and ask for Martin at Digigram. He'll be more than happy to explain to you how the, the, the products work. And with Icoya, you could do SIP or you could do point-to-point RTP for contribution for your shows. One of the other things that's going on in the show here, we did SMMP. Divacom has a really nice, let's, let's see the Divacom screen. And that one, ooh, I lost my little track here. Oh, no, where'd it go? 003. The reason I bring up Divacom, and there's a remote control system similar to Burke. Uh, there, the picture you see is actually an SNMP GUI. So what they do is they give you the opportunity to take the SNMP information, which we know is hundreds of pages of, depending on the manufacturer and you can create an image and then you can click on it then you can also have it alert you you can do all various things so you know what's happening and that's what's really keen Burke offers a similar approach Davicom is doing it and it's an opportunity to try something new and different and get you into the new technology in a nice way so um, just wanted to show that off I thought it was a pretty cool approach well those of you using Arc, Arc uh, Plus already know this Davicom for some may not be maybe new so I just thought I'd introduce them first and, oh, Kirk is back. And I think, let's see, what else do we have? What do, oh, one other thing, ATSC 3.0. 3.0. I've, I've heard of that. It, yes, I, it's it, television. I know yeah. we're talking radio at times, but radio and TV are blending together. It's, it's, it's blurring. ATSC 3.0 is now introducing to the television world what we in radio already know. You have HD1, HD2, and 3. Well, now uh, uh, ATSC, they have the technology. It's called, let me see if I can find it, LDM. And LDM is the layered Division multiplexing, you can have multiple layers in the carrier, and depending on the strength of the, the, the data rate and everything else you do to it, your receiver will pick that and give you the best quality. And you can also, as a single frequency network station, you can have, say, I'll use the example of New York City, you have your main channel, but maybe you have an audience in Long Island, but you want advertisers don't want to buy the entire New York, they can buy the Long Island segment uh, of your carrier, New Jersey or, or Westchester. It's a whole new approach, and it's a very, very opportune uh, place for revenue and trying something new. So I think it's something to look at. And if you're a low-power television station looking to do ATSC3, these are things you can do to justify the cost. Can you do that for Secaucus? Secaucus? The Secaucus? Well, you know, Meadowbrook Parkway, I don't know. We may have to. No, Meadowlands Parkway. Sorry, Meadowlands Parkway. That's Long Island. Yeah, we probably get a little sliver in there. Why not? (laughs) Secaucus. Sounds to me like an opportunity to buy a new 72-inch TV. Company. Absolutely, like absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Now, there's people complain. Well, I mean, I got to buy a new TV. Uh, well, uh, yes, ATSC 3.0, you'll need a new TV. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's a whole different modulation scheme. There's a whole, whole thing, all new science to well, it. Will there be, what kind of transition period will there be? I'm not yeah, sure yeah. how that's going to work. It's, I don't know it's TV. Did you say modulation? Yeah, he did say okay. modulation. He's qualified to say modulation. Oh, okay. Right. Modulation Barely. sciences? No, sorry. <laughs> so, we're, we'll continue. Your, yes, your we'll come back. In a few minutes. Uh, I want to bring in real quick. Frank Fody, uh, CEO of the TELUS Alliance, good friend of mine. Thank you, Frank, for so long. And uh, Frank, uh, in fact, it was Frank who years ago, uh, I said, Frank, I'd like to adjust processing internationally. And you know what he said? It's those magic words. You can do that. You can you do can this. Do yeah. You can do yeah. this. Yeah. I think you've picked up a few airline miles over the years. I have. I have. You know? <laughs> so tell me about the show. What's, what's, we're here in your booth. Thank you for the space. My booth? Yeah. Well, <laughs> our booth, actually. Yeah. Um, it's been an exciting week, you know, um, it's it's almost like the you know it's it's 25 years we've done this on our own now, and each year there's like the, been this wonderful vibe of where somehow you, you know the from a famous movie if you build it they will come yeah that's yeah. It, you know it, it's like the field of dreams if you will but um, uh, I, I guess I'd call it the field of innovate disrupt repeat 
as compared to some others who want to say, want to be imitate defeat. Um, <laughs> hey, you know, <laughs> truth hurts. Okay. That's it. That's just, yes. Mary Ann was on a few minutes ago and told us about the, the award that the Volt won. I understand you had a, you or your cat had a little hand in, in the clipper there. Well, you know, Kirk, um, uh, a quick short story is uh, about within the last 10 years, I made a, an active business decision, and that being that where people would like to claim that I was like the LeBron James, if you will, of audio processing, I figured before LeBron is done playing at, his, at a peak level, let's go find the next set of superstars. And, and we have that in Cornelius Gould. We have that in Leif Clayson. We have that in Hans von Sutphen. We have that in actually a number of other people, Rob Dye, Rob Dye. you know, and a, and a host of other um, characters, if you will. And we all are characters, if, if I may say so. So um, um, what you're seeing now, actually, has been the collaborative effort. You know, Corny, I can't say enough about him. You know, uh, the whole G-Force thing, which he did most of the dynamics. I did Solar Plexus. Um, yes, I did. You know, I have... Um, I guess gotten back on the bicycle, if you will, and done some things on the final cl limiting or clipping system. And what's interesting is, I had a couple people come up to me and claim that some of our esteemed, well, I should say, our a few of the wannabes are are now claiming that 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 they're able to match us. Well, the 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 thing is, is that I already have in the can you know, the next one and the one after that, <laughs> you know, which will probably see the light of day yeah. before this year's over. Um, and you know, the goal being is that, you know, we, we never stop pushing the bar. And, and if I may tell a quick story, I'm reading a, a wonderful book right now called, um, originals and the whole, it's a study about what makes certain innovators, you know, um, uh, somebody that had like an, uh, a one hit innovation or, a long stream of innovators, and if um, and they they tell the story of Albert Einstein of all things, and that Albert Einstein was some was an innovator that he you know he did the uh, whole theory of relativity in his 20s, but from then on and, and you know great man I mean no disrespect to Mr. Einstein and his legacy, but years later, the challenge that Albert had was, you know, when uh, the whole concept of quantum physics was coming around, he debated it. And unfortunately, it, you know, we all know what happened with quantum physics. The point being is that Albert Einstein had a, a you know, a great world-changing uh, innovation at a point in his life, and he was locked into that. Um, and we've seen some of that in our industry. The difference in the TELUS Alliance, and especially with Omnia, is that our innovations, we, we observe the world for what it is, and then we come back and say, well, okay, here's the world for what it is, and oh, by the way, world, here's some things you may not know you need, so that we push the bar out there a little bit, and people gravitate towards us, and then we push the bar out there a little bit, and then people gravitate towards us. And if there's anything, what we, we're now seeing is that the wannabes, and, a, and, and even a former, the, Albert, the person who could be thought of as the Albert Einstein in our industry, they're now a wannabe and a follower. So, you know, I'm, I'm telling that story because we are truly innovators. We are truly disruptors. And then we, re then we repeat the process. Yeah. So for those, you know, who may be out there listening, you know, um, do think about that as you're looking at, you know, things in your facility going forward. And I'm not just talking about audio processing, but the whole ecosystem of broadcasting. I probably have overstayed my welcome here, and I apologize, and uh, I thank you both and everybody and your wonderful organization to have this opportunity and my dear friend here from uh the, the thunder down under <laughs> is that the deal yeah maybe <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. yeah listen to this <laughs> oh yeah maybe all right you can go talk to your buddy Eastwind back in ohio and we'll see what's going on but kirk thanks for the opportunity to to, to share some stories here with you guys and i hope this week's been great for you guys i appreciate as well. you being here too frank. my pleasure thanks so, thank so, so very thank much you, frank. and congratulations on the awards we got thank you very much all right all right, and uh, joining us also here is a friend of mine from uh, Down Under, as you mentioned. Hello. Simon Simon Jackson. Welcome in, Simon. Hi, how are you? You're terrific. Good. I, I wanted to bring you in here if you would give us a little insight. You, you what, you live in Auckland? I live in Auckland, New Zealand. Yeah. yeah. And uh, ABC, we work, we work all over the world. So, um, But I've been spending a lot of time in Fiji recently. 
which is an interesting place to work. Uh -huh. Nice place, actually, especially when there's snow on the ground in your part of the world. Yeah. <laughs> Tropical paradise, what can go wrong, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you, but you're involved there on several projects, <laughs> uh, like government-level projects, yeah. and then getting things to work. What, yeah, what, I mean, one of the ones we're doing at the moment is, is a rollout of national, uh, a national digital television platform. And the company's established, or the government has established a uh, essentially a infrastructure management company that's going to roll out a DVB-T2, or it is rolling out a DVB-T2 um, television platform. And that's been, that's been challenging. And uh, the challenges have been around a lot, a lot of things around uh, the environment we have to work in. Uh, you know, I've got some interesting pictures of uh, uh, transmission sites with rusty masts and, uh, and uh, antenna systems that have been blown away and whole masts that have been blown to the ground through cyclones. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, yeah. Wow. So, wow. Yeah, so it's an interesting, interesting place. And power at 41 cents a kilowatt forces you to, to think outside the square. <coughs> um, solar, you have wow. solar power running transmitters? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's, what we, that's what we have to do. So, interesting enough, the, the short, long story, but, but when we started this process, we, we planned originally on using existing transmission sites because there's existing analog television and radio there. Yeah, yeah. And what happened is as we started looking at these sites and, and, and halfway through this process, we were struck with a major cyclone. We're talking, um, you know, there was gusted wind gusts of up to nearly 300 kilometers an hour. Don't know what that is, miles. Wow, it's, you know. it's a lot. And, uh, and you know, we had, we, had, we had towers which had just crumpled in upon themselves, been twisted oh, around, you know, and, uh, and pushed to the ground. So a lot of infrastructure loss. We had sites that had no power for up to six months afterwards. Because the the level of infrastructure damage, you know, these are the last places that that the power company is trying to return power to. So, right, right. So we had to really rethink our design, and so what we have gone for in the end is to is to use a containerized approach to these sites, which is not unusual. But mm -hmm. we've actually stepped outside traditional broadcast and looked at at containerized data centers as a model, because you know these are places where high availability and power conditioning and power availability is really important. Huh. Um, oh. And and also, I, I kind of like the idea of, of a clean room approach to a transmission. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Because you know, absolutely, Fiji's a long way from anywhere, and so when you have to get spare parts, you know, so managing uh, things like humidity and, and temperature and, uh, and and doing that efficiently is is, is really nice. And so um, at, at, a, at a large site where we're going to be combining both all the FM carriers as well as putting the DVB T2 platform, our own microwave linking. Um, you know, we're, we're running uh, big banks of solar cells. So during the day, we're basically using our own power. Uh, we've got a generator module. It's a twin generators and 10,000 litre tank for, for diesel fuel. And the idea is, um, now this is a problem you would have come across. You know, when you design a site, you go, what, what's my power requirement? What do I need? And you have to look into the crystal ball, right? So, and, and you know, we don't want to buy lots and lots of different models of, of, of generator right. as well. So this is, we've got lots of sites to do. So. We've gone for an approach where we've got um, solar power gives us power during the day, and then overnight we use the the mains, the grid essentially as as you know a separate power source. Mm -hmm. But we also have these uh, flow batteries, these huge ten kilowatt flow batteries. So this you know you know about flow technology. I don't know about flow batteries. It replaces the paste electrolyte yeah. with a fluid that you can replace it with. Yeah, huh. so my, my understanding, huh. you 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 you, yeah. you add add electricery to to one end inside the inside, inside the electrolyte, so and you pass it across a membrane. Yeah, and as it passes across, it actually releases the the electricity. Yeah, so. it's a combination of a fuel cell and this electrolyte that's not in a paste form. If you take a battery and cut it in half, yeah, you have yeah. electrode that's physical. There's right. a paste that creates the plus and minus. Right. Here it's a fluid. So as the fluid passes through, so you can actually replenish it, so it can recharge itself as it's discharged. Okay. Yeah. So since it's a fluid, you can you can get it out. Out of there and recharge the fluid yeah, yeah. and run it back through. So, so you okay. can you can right. you can uh, cycles. Who cares? You just keep keep doing it. I mean, it's the the it's guarantee cool. on these batteries is ten years and thirty thousand. I mean, it's, it's huge. <laughs> and the thing is, they say, look, the the, the guarantee is only ten years because we haven't been able to run it long enough to you know right. work out what. It, and but they actually say, you know, off the record, look, it could be twenty years. Could you know? In actual fact, they think you'd have to replace some of the mechanical components around holding it together. Before right. Yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. Right. So, um, so, so solar and these flow batteries yeah, that get charged, yeah. and then uh, when you have to, you go to, uh, to yeah, the grid. Well, and, and what happens? So, when we, if, if the grid ever dies and, uh -huh. and when it's at night, for instance, what we'll do is we run the generator. But we're talking about sizing generators. Well, all we do is we run them flat out and we charge the battery, and then we just run off the, and they stop. Ah, uh, yeah. And the battery does its thing. When it gets down, they run them flat out again at most efficient. 
Yeah. And they stop. Yeah. So we don't have to worry about sizing anymore too much. And we, we, we've got room to grow. So, so the battery is used to float the load. Yeah. And the generator exactly. just trickle charges. Exactly. Pretty much. We so should it's do, a deep cycle. We should do a, a, <laughs> <That's exactly laughs> it. we should do a, a, a toward episode and so we can really take a good look at, at uh, from, from, from there. Oh, you have yeah. to come to Fiji. Yeah. Clearly, yeah. But, yeah. 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 Clearly. Oh, I like that idea. Yeah. Clearly. Yeah. Simon, we're running out of time. Thank you very much. Thank you so much for this. Uh, this really fascinating. I All appreciate right. it very much. See you later. Okay, take Bye. care. Simon Jackson with uh, AVC, headquartered in Auckland, New Zealand. They are in uh, New Zealand, Australia, Fiji. Uh, they're in India, and they're in the, what we call the Middle East. They call it the Far West, but that's where they are. <laughs> hey, uh, joining us here is Fritz Goldman. Hey, Fritz, how are you? Great to see you, Kirk. You were here uh, last year. I'm yes. glad you are able to return. Yes. And, uh, um, well... What's happened in the last oh, year? Oh, man, I'll, I'll tell you, so much. I mean, uh, there's so much going on with U.S. Traffic Network now. I was here under the auspices of Radiate Media last year, which yeah. was the traffic reporting company. We've since merged with Global Traffic Network out of Australia, and so we're truly a global organization right now. And we're putting zip ones out there just day and night. So uh, this this is an IP codec, and uh, yeah, we happen to be in the booth where they're, they're represented. Uh, and it's an IP codec that has some features that overcome some of the uh, irregularities, shall we say, of exactly. the public internet. Yes, and, and the nice thing for us is, is that literally we can just pop it in somebody's house and have a home studio that sounds as good, if not even better possibly, than at some kind of a facility. And so we've been doing that left and right because, for example, in uh, Dallas a few weeks ago, uh, we had a person who was commuting from downtown Dallas out to a suburban area, Farmer's Branch, I think, or Flower Mound. Yep. Anyway, you know, yep. it's, it's an hour drive, and, and that's uh, in good traffic. Yeah. Uh, and so she was just getting completely burned out, and it's like, well, why don't we just take what we had at the hub facility, which was a Zip one, just literally take it out of the rack, put it, cart it to our house, plug it into her home internet, which was just AT and T, you know, com regular uh, residential internet, uh, relatively good service, and it just works. It is amazing when we're in the audio business and we don't have to have a set like in television. Although people are starting to do more of that too, but we can. It's really reasonable. For people to work where it's convenient for them to oh, work. Oh, yes, absolutely. And, and she is actually just broadcasting a couple of blocks away to downtown Dallas. But there would be no reason. And we do have many situations where people are, in fact, broadcasting from one end of the country to the other. And it sounds like you and I are talking right here. So, yeah, you know? yeah. The latency is where you it's still a pretty natural conversation. Well, so we use yeah, the yeah. enhanced low delay yeah. Uh, yeah. codec. Uh, so it is a conversational codec and since it's voice only it's very reasonable quality and uh, yeah there's essentially uh, the latency would be equivalent to a cell phone conversation which is essentially no latency so uh, yeah. you know it's perfect yeah wow well thank you for deploying all these what do you see uh, coming up in the future a bit more of the same uh, what, so what do you see? for us uh, a lot of the same uh, what we're doing is is so of course we have that radio traffic business but yeah. we have a television traffic business and the television model of course is a, is you know much heavier uh using cameras and everything else. So we're not necessarily thinking about doing it at people's houses, although there is a fellow who lives in uh, Palm Springs, Weathercaster, and he does tr weather for a station in Lincoln, Nebraska, or, or Omaha or something, So, yeah. and from his garage. Yeah. Uh, so he's got I, a green screen and everything. I saw a video about this guy. Yeah, Jeff Fox. Yes, yes. Uh, so he moved out there, and you know, and, and I think he may actually do it for an, even another station, so he kind of like bounces from one to the other. Sure, so, sure. so we're thinking about doing something like that for the traffic model, although not from a home facility, but for small markets to have a central facility to talk to the Akron, Ohio's of the world, or the you know the whatevers, and and have a central office to handle three or four or five facilities, stations, and do it once again over the internet. So, cool. uh, so we're doing that. So that's something that uh, is is definitely you know feasible. Uh, whether it's uh, the the economics, the business model is there. That's yet to be seen. Not that the business model is any problem because certainly the costs are extremely reasonable. I mean, we're talking about four thousand dollars for one end, and the station already having gear in place to do it. So that's why that works out very, really well. Uh, but that's one thing. Uh, of course, we're once again doing so much more in the, in the audio world. Uh, we work with uh, a number of uh, vendors for not live programming, but where it would be recorded rather than pushing audio from a file. We do it through some other mechanism. So News Boss is one of the uh, ah, big yeah. providers. We work yeah. with them. 
closely. So we're doing a lot more of that. So, so that's one thing. And of course, the other hat that I wear is at the Museum of Broadcast Communications in Chicago, yeah, yeah. where you guys have provided we- the a great setup for us, and we use that. And the funny thing was, is even though you had installed a Zip One there in the installation of a beautiful board, uh, an Axia studio. We hadn't actually used it for whatever reason. So uh, I think sometime last fall, I said, well, let me just plug it into the Internet and let's start using that Zip1. We had two Zephyrs, uh-huh. yeah. uh, ISDN, and everybody was just so used to you know, just sure. dial it up. Sure, yeah. I said, let's save ourselves the hassle and the money. Let's just use the Zip1. And we did that, and we just literally switched over overnight. And then, like, they keep it kind of at the, the uh, Zephyr on hot standby just sure. in case. But I, I don't think we've had a... Uh, ISDN call in probably six months. So, so that you know that that that's another thing. That whole technology, good as it was, is now kind of fading off. So sure, good, sure, good. So I talk somebody's uh, up there up to paying eight hundred dollars a month for an ISDN line and four dollars a yes. minute for yes. yes any any call if it's possible mm. to even get, get it one, installed. Yeah. Yeah. So we in fact actually tried to do that in Dallas at a particular uh, employee's house, and uh, through the phone companies they don't want to do it, and then there's you know. One company is no longer handling local service. Another oh, company. Gee. We just gave up. So zip one all the way. Fritz, we're out of time. But I appreciate you coming on. <laughs> Absolutely, thank Kirk. You it's always much. a pleasure. I hope I Thanks, uh, represented Fritz. your product line well. Oh, well, 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 thank you. I'm, I'm more in, in, as interested in the technology and how it's actually helping broadcasters oh, yes. to get their job yeah, done. No. It, yeah. Just the fact of being able to take a person and jump around the country to different facilities uh, and have that flexibility in staffing, that's made a big difference for our people. And, so. and, and have them not even really think about it. It just works. Yeah, just yeah. dial it up. Fritz, thanks a lot. Thanks, Kirk. Appreciate Good to see you. you. Appreciate Good you. to see you, too. Yes. So long. Fritz. Take care. Chris, uh, we want to talk about the folks at Lavo, our sponsor, Lavo. Yeah. Yes. And uh, uh, did you get stopped by their booth? Yes, I did. Well, uh, I understand they have a new console called the Ruby. Did you get Ruby? To see? Yeah. I briefly looked at it. Uh, I was playing more with the uh, the touch screen, the, the oh, surface. What? Tell me about that. What's that? I think it's great. Uh, the smart thing that Lavo did was the size of the the, uh, the faders. You know, okay. What you know as a fader, physically, is about the size of your thumb. So right. you've, you, your, your brain, your hand coordination, everything matches. So when you slide it up and down, is what I did. I reached across. I was talking with Bill Bennett, one of the reps from yeah. Lavo. Yeah. And I said, well, let me, let me talk to you at, the hand, at arm's length, and I'm sliding it up and down. And I can actually keep my hand against the glass or the, the surface yeah. and slide it up and down and stay accurate. Huh. And I thought it was really cool. And what's nice about the virtual approach with Lavo, with the, the product, with that in their little radio in a bag, is it opens up opportunities. I was talking to Catfish about this, and he and I have talked about this over the years, so this is nothing new. But I, I still believe, at least with their particular implementation, you could do so much with just a simple surface on location and keep everything back at the, the studio. Right, right. And just have a full-blown, your, your announcers just do their thing and not feel in, in, impeded by the, the technology or anything else. Or you can turn it around and have a full-blown interface at the event, the, the venue, and have the studio controlling everything, and all you have down there is an engine and everything plugged into it. Ah, okay. And then you, okay. So you put the flexibility between the two sides. That's yeah, what I think yeah. is great. A couple paradigms work there. So the the were you look at the relay product? Is yeah, the relay product. Okay. Yeah. So can you can you give us a quick uh, elevator speech of what is what is relay? The relay is the is the radio in the bag. Okay. And it's uh, that that's everything right in the in the hardware. It's not like a separate engine and service. So there's one RU box. One RU. And a and a touch screen, bro? Um. Or, when I, what I saw it didn't seem to have a touch screen. I oh, think mouse it's just and, the mouse and stuff. Yeah. Okay. But it gives you a, a, a form factor that you could just put on <clears> your <throat> shoulder and go somewhere and go up and. and, and what well, is the idea that you get a you get a mixing console, you get some ins and outs, mm-hmm. but you also in in within relay you get. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if everything's implemented yet. You, you get a telephone hybrid. You get some you know some talk show paper. According to one of the persons, yes, that that yeah. was part of it. Yeah. Codec built Codec, in. Codec built in. Yeah. yeah they do? They're um, they're Ravenna. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So uh, you said you called it a radio station in a bag. I believe that's what they're calling it. Yeah. I have that correct. Uh, I call it that because it, that's really what it is. Yeah. And the point about that is, and this is where I want to tell you about, about Lavo, our sponsor Lavo. They have for, for decades been building big, solid audio consoles, the kind that you find at live events like the Olympics and the uh, World Cup. Uh, uh, and, and you'll find them at the, at the BBC, at the CBC, at NPR. NPR. Yep. Yeah. And uh, uh, so, so Lavo's working to come out with products for broadcasters that, that they can just make their life easier and keep that reliability, that German engineering 
that's in the Lavo product. So I thank Lavo very much for sponsoring our show. If you like more information about that, please go to the special webpage, the special landing page uh, that they put up just for our show and just for you, viewers and listeners to the show. And that's Lavo.com. That's L-A-W-O, Lavo.com slash twerk. T-I-T-W-I-R-T, as in This Week in Radio Tech. So lavo.com slash twerk. If you do that, it does help us out, and I'd appreciate very, very much. Chris has a Maserati payment. I've got a yacht payment. We, 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 That's need, exactly we need a little credit on that. And the best part with the Lavo, you can configure the console buttons to anything you want. So if today on the right-hand side is the headphone control yeah. for yourself, tomorrow yeah. you can make it the left side. You can oh, make it, you, okay. They, they love the fact that it's totally configurable. Yeah. Nothing is – no defaults, which – in some respects, it could be troubling, but otherwise, it gives you so much flexibility. The only thing that causes an issue is the lack of imagination. Wow. The Lavo product line, it's pretty wild. I sat to talk with some of the guys. Yeah. Yeah. I said, well, if you could do this, well, you could change the program. And do this. I'm like, really? <laughs> so your imagination is really your limitation. Gotcha. Gotcha. Good deal. Yeah. Hey, well, we, we, had, we had 30 seconds. Come sit down. Ladies and gentlemen, For Jesus. I sake. proudly present from, Delhi, from New Delhi, India... It's Jesus. And we're not kidding. We're not oh. kidding. Hey, Jesus, welcome in. Thank you, guys. Uh, can you get the microphone in front of your mouth? Yeah. We have to go through this again, it. right? Yeah. Explain right. how this works. Yeah. Do this. Do this. Uh, sorry, guys. All right, it's okay. It's, it's television. Yeah. All right, we got about 30 seconds, Jesus. Before we start the Frank party? No, we, well, we have, no, we have to go. <laughs> oh. we, have, we have to go. Good to see you. Jesus Mantu from India. He has built more radio stations. Yeah, we than, have nearly yeah. 300 plus consoles. I... Uh, uh, on here right now in India. Serving over a billion people. Yes. Yeah. Over go, go, a bi- about a billion people. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. This is the comment somewhere going around in the show. So there's, <laughs> a, there's a lot of audio over IP, actually, a consoles in oh, India. Oh, yeah. 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 People yeah. are really liking it and because it saves their cabling. You, they just plug it in and yeah. that's on. Cool. And you have met Mr. Murad at, uh, what do you call, at, yeah. in Ajman. In Ajman, yes. yes. What he was saying that they have... They have thrown tons and tons of cables, and earlier it was like a two-month planning when they yeah. want to build a studio. Mm-hmm. Now it is just when they hear they have to build the studio, two days later the studio is ready. It, it isn't that true. That is amazing. And yeah. they are using. Uh, I wish we hadn't got talked to Chan. Uh, they're using the broadcast bionics. Um, uh, you know, oh, yeah, virtual director. Virtual yeah. director. Virtual yeah. Director. And yeah. They are That's thrilled. Cool. They we, started with one. Yeah. Even even you know how it started there. It was just a one zip one. Yeah. And they felt like the voltage and the everything inside that box is amazing. Yeah. And then it started with one X node. And today, whole facility of, I think, more than, uh, what do you call, 10 IQ consoles and maybe maybe 50, uh, 50 X nodes are all wow. up. Wow. With, they started later with the VX, and now it is, everything is on IP. Do you, uh, do you have a smartphone? Yeah. Okay. When you, get, when you go back in, would you take some more pictures, please? Definitely. Thank and you. Mr. Murad told me and that. send them to me. And, and he said that yeah. if you want to do a Skype interview with him, yeah. he's more than happy. Cool. Anytime. All right. Just All right. Did, now, did, now there's, two, there's two Mirage. There's the older one and the older son. Yeah. Older one. The older one will come on? Yeah. Cool. He's, he a, said, he's a good guy. Yeah. He said at any, any point of time, he loves you. Oh, well. He's a good man. He's a good man. Right. Got a good taste too. Yeah, okay. and he, whenever he talks, I mean, he he knows what he's talking all about. <laughs> okay, we got to go, Chris. Thanks so much, man. Appreciate welcome, all, all your homework. We only got to a third of your stuff, right? That's fine. Yeah, uh, we can always talk. We could do a follow up to the. Oh follow-up yeah, good idea. Next week, good idea. Jesus, thank you for coming. Thank you so much. Appreciate you very much. Thanks for having me here. Thanks a lot to Suncast back at the studio at uh, at the uh, GFQ Network. Thanks to also Andrew Zarian, uh, the founder of the GFQ Network, giving us a home to broadcast from. And thanks to Telos Alliance for providing the internet. With which is really expensive here. Oh, yes. <laughs> really. You don't want to know how much and internet costs. it's so costs. efficient at that price. No, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. It's inefficient at that price. Oh, man. Amazing. <laughs> Will, uh, coming up uh, in future weeks, we got Joe Cipriano, the uh, voiceover artist, going to be here talking about microphones. going to love that. Lots more coming up, too. We'll see you next week on This Week in Radio Tech. Bye-bye, everybody.